also means that if the temperature dips lower than 100 million Kelvin, the process shuts off completely. Triple Alpha is a cauldron of chaotic fusion. At this point, an interesting difference arises between the evolution of stars with masses greater than about 1.0 solar masses and those with masses less than 1.8 solar masses. For stars of the lower mass bracket, as the helium core continues to collapse during evolution up to the tip of the red giant branch, the core becomes increasingly electron degenerate. Furthermore, significant neutrino losses from the star's core before reaching the tip of the red giant branch result in a temperature inversion near the center, cooling it relative to the layers above where the hydrogen shell burning is happening. When the temperature and density become high enough to initiate the triple alpha process, again, this is about 10 to the 8th Kelvin and 10 to the 7th kilograms per cubic meter, respectively, the energy release in such stars is explosive. The ignition of helium burning occurs initially in a shell around the center of the star, but the entire core quickly ignites, blowing away the core's temperature inversion. The luminosity generated by the helium burning core reaches 10 to the 11th solar luminosities, comparable to that of an entire galaxy. While extreme, this tremendous energy release lasts only for a few seconds and most of the energy never reaches the surface. It's absorbed by the envelope above, perhaps causing a short burst of mass loss from the surface of the star. But in general, this event is hidden from view and has never been seen observationally. This is called the helium flash and occurs only in low mass stars. It occurs because of the combination of the basically non-existent temperature dependence of the electron degeneracy pressure and the extreme temperature dependence of the triple alpha process. The flash's energy must go first into lifting the degeneracy, turning the electrons back into an ideal gas loss state. This phase transition takes a lot of energy only then can the energy go into thermal and kinetic energy. Once it does, the core then expands, which decreases the density. A lower density then lowers the temperature, which in turn then slows this crazy reaction rate. Now that these stars burn helium, the extra energy stabilizes the core against collapse. In addition, there's still hydrogen burning in a thin shell outside the helium burning core. This hydrogen burning shell remains the dominant source of the star's luminosity. The core helium fusion allows the core to expand and the core's expansion pushes the hydrogen burning shell above it outward, cooling it and therefore causing the shell's energy output rate to decrease slightly. This energy output results in an abrupt decrease of the star's luminosity as seen from the outside. The lower luminosity allows the envelope to contract and the effective temperature to increase. This process means that the star will descend quickly into a new region of the HR diagram, the horizontal branch. This whole thing happens fast, lasting only about a million years. At this point, I want to point out that you can find much of this material in Carol and Ostley's excellent undergraduate textbook, Introduction to Modern Astrophysics. This book is the standard textbook for all astronomy majors. At this new phase, there is a helium burning core with a hydrogen burning shell for both low and intermediate mass stars. Here the increasing compression of the hydrogen burning shell eventually causes the shell's energy output and the star's overall energy output to begin to rise again. In this period on the horizontal branch, the star is in a newer, shorter phase of hydrostatic and thermal equilibrium. The radius of the star is about 10 solar radii, and the temperature is much less than the current solar temperature, about 4,700 Kelvin, and the luminosity is about 40 times that of the luminosity of the sun. With this associated increase in surface temperature that we found from before, the envelope's convection rises towards the surface. Now, a new convective core develops. This convection arises again because of the steep temperature sensitivity of the triple alpha process. These things combine to push the envelope to be hotter at the surface, causing a blueward horizontal evolution along the horizontal branch. At this time, it's the helium burning analog of the hydrogen burning main sequence, but with a much shorter time scale. For sun-like stars, this blueward advancement only lasts about 100 million years, and while it goes on, the star is quickly building up a carbon-oxygen core, which is still too cool to ignite carbon fusion. Now I want to backtrack just a little bit. Let's take a closer look at something that's already happened back in the main sequence lifetimes of stars that are just a bit more massive than the Sun. 
It's important to note that many Sun-like stars use the CNO cycle instead of the proton-proton chain for nuclear reactions. Now, the Sun only gets about 2% of its energy from the CNO cycle, but in slightly larger stars, about 1.1 solar masses or more, CNO accounts for 50% and then dominates the energy production at all higher masses. Just like the proton-proton chain, the net result is a conversion of four protons into one helium nucleus with a release of energy in the form of gamma ray photons, neutrinos, and positrons. This process does not consume carbon-12. It goes in at the top and comes out at the end. We say it acts as a catalyst. And because carbon and nitrogen have six and seven protons respectively, in order to overcome the repulsion of all these positive charges, the protons must be moving very fast. Because the temperature in a fully ionized gas is directly related to the average speed of the particles of the gas, this is why the CNO cycle occurs at higher temperatures than the proton-proton chain. The limiting reaction is the fourth step, where nitrogen-14 captures a proton. This is because nitrogen-14 has a very small cross-section with respect to all the other things in this chain. This means there can be a measurable buildup of nitrogen-14 during the course of this reaction chain. The next phase of the evolution is very similar to the evolution following the exhaustion of the hydrogen burning core. It starts to turn redward again on the HRI diagram until it starts to bend upward along a path referred to as the asymptotic giant branch, or AGB. The AGB is so named because the evolutionary track approaches the line of the red giant branch asymptotically from the left. The AGB can be thought of as the helium burning shell analog to the hydrogen burning shell red giant branch. At this point in the evolution, the core temperature of say a five solar mass star is approximately two times 10 to the eighth Kelvin, and its density is on the order of 10 to the ninth kilograms per cubic meter. This means during the early asymptotic giant branch, a star has two shell sources. Although the two shell sources are depicted, it is the helium burning shell that dominates the energy output throughout the early asymptotic giant branch. The hydrogen burning shell has become nearly inactive at this point. Note that the diagram is really not to scale, and to visualize the structure from the hydrogen burning shell inward, I've had to cartoonify it and greatly enlarge it relative to the surface of the star. The expanding envelope initially absorbs much of this energy produced by the helium burning shell, as the effective temperature continues to decrease, the convective envelope deepens again. This time it extends down into the chemical discontinuity between the hydrogen-rich outer layer and the helium-rich region above the helium burning shell. This mixing results in a second dredge-up phase, which increases the helium and nitrogen content of the envelope. This nitrogen comes about from the incomplete CNO cycle I described before. In fact, when running stellar evolution simulations to equilibrium, there's always an excess of nitrogen-14 because of its small interaction cross-section with proton collisions. The enhanced nitrogen-14 has been observed in red giant stars, which confirms the existence of the CNO cycle and again tests these stellar evolution theories.